There are a lot of different electronic development kits available that can be used to build an early proof of concept prototype for a new product. But how do you select the best development kit to build the prototype for your specific new product? If you select the wrong kit, then it may not be able to do what you need it to do, or it will be really difficult to transition it to production. These kits are rarely used for production because of their cost and large size, but they are fantastic options for creating an early functional prototype. The most popular choices are Arduino, Raspberry Pi, ESP32, and STM32. There are also other boards like Teensy, Particle, Adafruit Feather, BeagleBone, and many others. My goal here is not to review every single development board on the market, but instead to give you broader guidance on how to pick the best one for your specific project after reviewing some of the different development boards, I'll share with you the most important yet most commonly overlooked criteria you must consider when you select your development kit. Then I'll share my suggestions for a few different specific use cases. By far the most popular series of development boards is Arduino. And Arduino is definitely not just one board and there are a lot of different Arduino boards available. In the past, most Arduino boards used really old and slow, fairly expensive 8-bit microcontrollers, and the boards were really big because the focus was purely on education and keeping the, the design as simple as possible. This includes the Arduino Uno, like this one that you can see here, but also includes the Mega and Leonardo boards. You can easily see here all the wasted space on this board, and small size was obviously not a priority. The Arduino Micro is much smaller, but it still uses an outdated microcontroller. These Arduinos are okay for some projects, but most projects need more computing power, a smaller size, and or wireless connectivity. Arduino now offers several boards that are much better fits for many projects. This includes their MKR series and their Nano 33 series. You have to be careful because their standard Nano and the Nano Every boards still use outdated 8-bit microcontrollers. In most cases, and especially for Arduino boards, I suggest you stick with boards that use ARM Cortex-M based microcontrollers, which means it has a higher performance 32-bit processor core. Keep in mind that ARM Cortex-M is just a, a processor architecture that lots of chip makers license and implement in their own microcontrollers. It's by far the most common microcontroller design used in commercial products. For example, here is an Arduino Nano 33BLE, which has an ARM Cortex-M microcontroller, but it actually uses a chip from Nordic Semiconductors and they have embedded a Bluetooth radio along with the processor core all in a single chip. This board here is an Arduino Nano 33 BLE Sense, which adds lots of various sensors to the Arduino Nano 33 BLE board that we just looked at. These sensors include temperature, humidity, light, sound, and barometric pressure, along with an accelerometer, gyroscope, and magnetometer are all included on this board. For a long time, a Raspberry Pi pretty much meant one thing, and that was a high-performance microprocessor board that can run a full operating system. You can hook up a monitor and a keyboard and use one like a very small computer. That's great for building projects for fun, but not always so great for projects when it comes time to scale up to a production design. The reason is that a Raspberry Pi is overkill for a majority of products. Unless you really need that level of computing power, using one will overly complicate your project, make it more expensive to scale, drastically overinflate your manufacturing cost, and drain your batteries much faster. You don't want to pay the price for that type of processing performance unless you really need it. For most projects, a microcontroller is a much better solution. If you do really need that type of processing performance, then you'll want to consider Raspberry Pi Compute modules, which are smaller versions of their DIY boards that are actually designed to be used inside of commercial projects or commercial products. 
One problem with using a Raspberry Pi in your project, even if you need that much computing power, is they can be challenging to find reliably in stock, especially at any type of volume. I'd suggest looking at similar alternatives that are available in stock, such as the Banana Pi, Orange Pi, Rock Pi, and Nano Pi. The Banana Pi also has a compute module version. We're not quite done yet with Raspberry Pi because recently they have finally ventured into the world of microcontrollers. The Raspberry Pi that you can see here is their first microcontroller based development board. The Pico uses their very own custom design microcontroller chip called the RP2040, which is another ARM Cortex M microcontroller. And you can see the, this microcontroller right here. It's a very impressive 32 bit microcontroller that is very affordable and widely available in stock, but it doesn't include any wireless connectivity. Although much smaller than the Arduino Uno, you can see even on the Pico, there is still quite a bit of wasted space. The Raspberry Pi Pico W that you can see here, it shows you why that space was there. And that's because on the uh, Raspberry Pi Pico W, they add on this uh, Wi-Fi module here. So you can see the two side by side. They have the same microcontroller. The difference is, is the, uh, the standard Pico doesn't have the Wi-Fi module. Interestingly, Arduino also now has a board using this same Raspberry Pi microcontroller. It's called the Arduino Nano 33 RP2040 Connect. Wow, <laughs> doesn't that name just roll off the tongue? I'd probably suggest you come up with something a bit more catchy for your own product's name. Although the Raspberry Pi Pico W and the Arduino Nano 33 IoT both offer Wi-Fi capabilities, they do so by bolting on a Wi-Fi module in addition to the current microcontroller chip, just like I showed you on the Raspberry Pi Pico W. A much better solution is the Espressive ESP32, which is a super fast microcontroller that embeds both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth all on a single integrated chip. This is a much better solution for most projects because having everything in a single chip reduces complexity, cost, and size. One reason I like the ESP32 so much is because it has a super simple migration path from early prototyping to mass production. You can purchase the ESP32 as a development board, like the one that you can see here, for use in early prototyping. But you can also just purchase the module, which is this part here. This is the built-in antenna on the module, but you can just purchase this module here, and then you can uh, add that, you can actually solder that module onto your own custom printed circuit board. Or finally, you can purchase the bare ESP32 chip itself, which is hidden behind this metal shield here. But this is rarely warranted unless you reach production volumes of several hundred thousand units due to the extra design complexity and increased certification costs. If your product doesn't require Wi-Fi or Bluetooth and it doesn't need the processing power of a full microprocessor board like the Raspberry Pi, then in most cases, the STM32 series from ST Microelectronics is my recommendation. Although the RP2040 from Raspberry Pi is also a great option for some projects. One of the things I like best about the STM32 series is there are hundreds of different versions available with just about every set of features and performance levels available in a microcontroller. Just like the RP2040, the STM32 series is once again based on an ARM Cortex-M processor core. The STM32 is probably the most common microcontroller used in commercial products that don't necessarily need Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Although many STM32 designs incorporate wireless connectivity through a separate module. STM Microelectronics offers two families of development boards based on the STM32 microcontroller, including their discovery boards and Nucleo boards. The most important criteria to keep in mind when selecting your development board, beyond whether or not it can even do what you want, 
is to be sure to consider the migration path from early prototype all the way to mass production. What frequently happens is someone will spend all this effort building and programming their proof of concept prototype using a development kit to later discover that it isn't practical for production and they have to basically start all over with a brand new design. There are two common cases where this most frequently happens. One is an under-design mistake and the other is an over-design mistake. A common under-design mistake is when someone builds an early prototype using a simple 8-bit Arduino, yet their full product really needs something with more features and performance. Eventually they have to upgrade to a 32-bit microcontroller and rewrite a lot of their code and learn a totally new microcontroller environment. Even worse is the over-design mistake, such as using a microprocessor-based Raspberry Pi to develop a prototype that really only requires a microcontroller. In that case, very little of the early prototype will carry over to the production version. Okay, let's now look at a few specific use cases. If your product needs Bluetooth but not Wi-Fi, then I'd suggest development kits that use the Nordic NRF52 series Bluetooth microcontroller which is, yes, it's an ARM Cortex-M based microcontroller. If your product needs Wi-Fi and maybe Bluetooth too, then I would recommend that you definitely go with the ESP32. If your product doesn't require either Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, then I'd probably suggest the ST Discovery and Nucleo boards based on the STM32, or a board based on the Raspberry Pi RP2040 chip such as the Raspberry Pi Pico.